I'm Paul Daddy and this is Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Today I'm smoking two pork butts. Now the cooking process will be the same, but they will be seasoned differently. Pork butt number one will be seasoned with the traditional barbecue rub, and pork butt number two will be seasoned with salt, pepper, and a little bit of paprika. How much difference will it make? Let's find out. The first thing to do is open up the pork butts and dry them off with paper towels. Now trim off any irregular pieces of fat or muscle. Sometimes I've been known to butterfly my pork butts, but today we'll keep it simple. I'm removing the fat cap. This will help us produce more bark, and more bark equals more flavor. Just slip your knife blade underneath the cap so you can cut through it and provide enough you can grab hold of it. Pull back the cap with one hand while cutting it loose with your knife. Work slowly and you can get it done. Removing the fat cap is optional. No doubt most people probably skip this part. Once that cap is removed, you can save it like I do. Put it in your next batch of sausage that you're gonna make. Pork butt number one gets Worcestershire sauce for the binder, followed by a good coating of a traditional barbecue type rub. Now you could use something like Cosmos Q cow cover, or if you wanna make your own rub, I'll leave a link right up here for a great recipe. Okay guys, I'm starting with what was the cap side. Now it really doesn't matter because we removed the cap, but it gives us a point of orientation to treat them both the same. Be sure and get plenty of rub on the sides and get down in any cracks that your pork butt might have. Press it in. Now flip that butt over and apply the binder and the rub. Press it in and pork butt number one is ready for the smoker. For pork butt number two, we're gonna start by making up our rub. Add in one part of Lowry seasoned salt and one part coarse black pepper. Put that in a suitable container and then just put a little paprika on top to give it some color. Mix it up, transfer it to a shaker. Once it's in the shaker, shake it up to give it a little more mix. On this rub, you could use kosher salt instead of Lowry's, but Lowry's gives us a little more complex flavor profile the easy way. Okay, on pork butt number two, use yellow mustard for the binder and add the rub just like before, and just like that, the number two pork butt's ready to go. Today I'm using my Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll be feeding this Yoder B and B Championship blend pellets, and in the meantime, the pork butts can just sit there and absorb some of that rub while the smoker heats up. Almost all pellet smokers need a little help in the smoke department. Once they get lined out at your selected temperature, for the most part, they'll run and be very efficient, and they'll produce very, very clean smoke. But clean smoke equals less smoky flavor in your meat. Too much heavy smoke's not good either. You can ask the offset smoker guys and gals about that. Now to help the pellet smoker out a little bit, I'm using a smoke tube. The smoke tube's made of stainless steel and mine is filled with applewood pellets. A propane torch is excellent for lighting up the open end of your smoke tube. It's good to let the flame burn for a few minutes. Once you've let it burn for a few minutes, then you can blow that flame out and lay the tube horizontally in the smoker and those pellets will slowly burn all the while they're adding smoke to your cook. When you put the smoky tube into your smoker, just be aware of where that flame end goes. I don't want it right under the Yoder's temperature probe. Now, how long will a smoke tube produce smoke? That can depend on what pellet you're using, your smoking temperature, as well as the volume of air that your smoker's moving. Now, pellet smokers have fans and that moves air. Now, my Yoder has two fans. It moves a lot of air. Keep in mind that the earlier part of your cook is when the meat absorbs the most smoke. Now, the point is that when the pellets are exhausted, it's done its job, and you don't need to refill it. Pork butt number one goes on the smoker close to the middle. We want to orient the pork butts where the thickest part is pointed toward your heat source. All right, pork butt number two, the one with salt and pepper, it goes right next to pork butt number one. So I'm probing the number one pork butt with my Thermalworks dot, and that's so we can keep up with the internal temperature. Now we're all set, the butts are smoking 275 degrees. The smoky tube is smoking and the dot is monitoring the internal temperature. Close the smoker door and leave it closed for the next three hours. The old saying goes, if you're looking, then you ain't cooking, and that's true. For the next three hours, you can monitor the pit temp, you can monitor the meat temp, and you can keep an eye on the pellet consumption. 
When the three hours is up, we want to spritz, and I'm using a 50-50 mix of apple cider, vinegar, and water solution, and this helps with the bark. Of course, it keeps the moisture on the meat, and the goal is to spritz quickly every hour after you reach the three hour mark. Now keep in mind that spritzing slows down the cook. You disrupt the pit by losing heat, and also the spritz solution cools down your meat. Probably somewhere after the five hour mark, your pork butt will reach between 165 and 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's time to wrap. Now most people probably wrap in form, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, but I've got where unless I need to contain a lot of liquids, then I usually wrap in butcher paper. So butcher paper probably breathes better, and it probably helps you maintain that bark that you worked so hard for. So I like to start with two sheets of pink butcher paper, about 40 inches long. Doesn't have to be exact, you can just eyeball it. You want to offset the seams so that you have a little bit more width than you would on just one sheet. If this was a brisket, we'd put down a little bit of beef towel here. But since it's pork, I use lard. And you can melt the lard ahead of time or you can just spread it on there like butter. Grease up your paper in the area where your pork butt's gonna sit when you first start your wrap. Add a little bit more lard on top of the pork butt. Once those pork butts are wrapped, they go back in the smoker at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at this point, we don't have to worry about smoke. We just need a good, reliable heat source. My Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker does a fantastic job as far as pellet smokers go. But the fact is, it's a very hungry beast. So cooking wrapped meat is not the highest and best use for this smoker. As an option, I'm switching over to my Cook Shack AmeriQ electric smoker. It's very efficient and it's preheated to 275 degrees. And I'm not using any wood because I don't need any smoke, none required. The Cook Shack always nails the temperature and it requires very little supervision, kind of like your oven. It's a lot more efficient. I moved the Thermalworks dot over to the Cook Shack so we can keep monitoring the internal temperature. So I'm looking for somewhere between 202 and 206. And after two and a half hours or so in the Cook Shack, that pork reached the 206 mark. And when you check the temperature with your handheld thermometer, that probe should have very little resistance if it is ready. A two hour resting period or longer works best. Let's unwrap butt number one. This is the one that had the traditional barbecue rub. Remove the bone. If that comes out clean, which it did, now that's another good sign that we've cooked it long enough. This one has a great bark, it's got a great color. We've got some smoke ring in there and it's got a lot of pinkish barbecue color to it. Be on the lookout for any excessive fat and this is a good time to discard it. Now quite frankly, there's not a whole lot of that in here. So let's unwrap pork butt number two. Yeah, that bone came out cleanly too. It also has great bark. It's got a decent smoke ring for a pellet smoker. This doesn't have quite that pinkish color that the other one does. Now let's sit down and I'll give them a taste test. Okay, pork butt number one is the one with the traditional barbecue rub. This tastes very good. Pork butt number two, that's the salt and pepper. Now this also tastes very good. And I am surprised at how closely the flavor profiles parallel each other. But that being said, I'm giving a very, very slight edge to the traditional barbecue rub. Keep in mind that that's my opinion and it's definitely not an overwhelming victory. You know, buying barbecue rub is very expensive. Even making your own complex barbecue rub, it gets quite pricey. Now, Lowry seasoned salt and pepper and a little paprika, that's a lot cheaper. Using kosher salt instead of the Lowry's, that's even cheaper than that. I'm sorry that I can't quite give you a clear cut winner, but the truth is either of these seasoned methods can give you a great pork butt. And now all you gotta do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and be sure to tell them that you heard it here at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue.